bring that six bottom down and start working on it. Finally got some decent weather again after being kind of shit all week. plow has something that we had never seen before until we got it and then we saw them in pictures these are the factory keepers that would have been should be on them um like i say never i think I've, we've saw them and seen them in pictures but never actually seen them on anything until we got this plow Oh, don't tell me. You're gonna tell me. I think that pin's a little bent. <laughs> and now my hole's in the wrong spot. I'll fix that later. I need pliers. Now this one is kind of broke, but probably gonna end up using lynch pins anyhow, just for simplicity, but it's kind of neat that they're still here. Okay. Get hooked up. I gotta retract the cylinder because I couldn't get it hooked up. So, where can we sit you? Looks like a good spot. I couldn't get the pin to line up because I can't get the damn lift link pulled back. I seem to recall having this issue before. So I just got it bucked up against the bracket for what I'm doing. That'll be fine. It's just got to go to the house.
that'll work. And tell you five bottom plow back right through that door no problem six bottom plow that doesn't steer right not so much probably could have got it if they had the tailwheel lined up right but not it did it didn't work I had to bring the fork truck up and it was a cluster but we got her but before I started tearing this apart I wanted to point out several subtle differences that I noticed between this one and the one that I tore down um, same model plow it's just the one that I tore apart is older than this one is. Um, so the first thing I noticed was this one has a late model tail wheel on it. Uh, that first plow had a uh, bent piece of flat stock with a form piece of channel iron welded to it for a backbone. This one's got the late style box tube frame tail wheel with the uh, heavier lift linkage than the new style steer rod and this is different too. Basically the entire tail wheel assembly on this plow is different. Um, this one does not have the goofy dork bend in the pipe and the pipe is actually on like actual purpose made flat stock mounts whereas the other plow had these doink cheese dick like sheet metal pipe hangers basically that they just put one side on bend it around the pipe and then put the other side on and you just they were just like tin sheet metal so this actually has one two three four five hangers on it and the accumulators all the way at the front whereas that other plow the accumulator was between the second and third bottom if I remember right um now it would have had to have been there but something was different about it oh it mounts in a different spot on that other plow the accumulator mounts off of one of the cylinder it mounts off the second bottom cylinder mount that's it um so there's those two things. On this plow, they have the ports on the cylinders coming off of this side. And on the other plow, they came off of that side and the hose is looped up and over. This plow, um, on the old plow, the uh, telescope just had two set screws or two nuts welded on the front pipe with set screws in them. This one has this big cast iron clamp. The other plow, um, the uh, stay rod for the mast. Back here, the bracket it went into is a formed piece of flat stock. On this one, it's a big casting. 
and it's just got a clevis with a bolt through here where on the other one it was a big piece of pipe with an eyelet and a bolt that went through here uh what else that might be everything there's just a few things on this plow that because it's newer it's different I think that's it so yeah just wanted to point that out for it oh I just actually noticed another thing on this plow they have pipe spacers in here between the lower beam and the cylinder mount and on that other plow they just stuck a bolt in there and drew it down tight I just noticed that one and this is what I'm when I talked talked about uh, the rod or the turnbuckles or the eyelets coming out of the uh, rods and breaking off and messing stuff up, you can see right here the damage that it caused. Um, the guy we bought this plow from said he would just go to the dealer and buy these things like six or seven at a time, and he'd use them all in a season. He said they would just they'd start to turn out they'd get out so far they snap off and then the bottom would come up and start hammering on the rod and it peened it you know that one's not too bad that one's all peened over that one's all peened over that one's all peened over that one's starting to turn out and that one's not terrible actually that whole cylinder right there is not terrible that one might clean up enough to just throw on the shelf for a spare and not mess with but uh so, yeah, that's the reason we're hopefully going to be able to put jam nuts on them and keep that from happening. So, anyway, goal for today is to get the tailwheel off, get it moved up, which is going to require freeing this telescope up, which we shall see. I've done one before. It's not too bad. You hook a tractor on both sides, get some tension on it, Get a nine pound sledgehammer, beat the crap out of it up in here, and then you can pull it apart with the tractors. You gotta beat on it with a sledgehammer because that rust is stuck enough that you can drag a tractor back or drag tractors back and forth and not break that rust. Found that out when I took my four or my pipe plow from a five bottom to a four bottom. So gotta do that and then need to take I saved this pull rod off of the five bottom that will hopefully work on this plow although on the other plow they had two pivots on the fourth bottom or the fifth bottom fifth bottom they had two they had one of these on each side and the lift link worked off of one two so We'll just have to see how that whole thing plays out. But anyhow, that's where we're at for right now.
Now it's time to see if I can get this damn pipe apart. Got the 1950 for an anchor, and I'm gonna pull with the super, or at least try that first, because the clutch slips in that thing. We're gonna find out how bad it does. But I got some tension on the bar. Gonna try smacking it with a hammer to break the rust and yank on it and go from there. how strong rust is because it was only engaged what is that probably 12 inches 13 inches something like that and before I hit it with a hammer I tried pulling on it just for shits and giggles it wasn't moving but that's some that's all you got to do is smack it with a hammer and they'll come right apart if you pull on them so there's that done so this was interesting this is the draw rod for your lift that goes between the tail wheel and the cylinder up there and i thought it was odd that hey i couldn't get the cylinder to hook up because there should have been a lot more slack in it than what there was and b i thought that damn thing was kind of heavy when i pulled it apart well that's because apparently at some point they broke this front half and made it out of a shaft from something because there's a woodruff key and a I got either a roll pin hole or there's a hole in the end of it. And then this end, they beat flat and then flattened it out with a torch and blew a hole in it with a torch. So this is what it's supposed to be. This is the one off of the plow I took apart, which it's obviously... They... Yeah, they broke it right there. And then welded that angle on there. If it wasn't for that, I'd probably attempt to straighten it and reuse it. But I might see if we got a hunk of pipe. And just make one real quick. Well, that one easier than I thought. Got a piece of pipe that fit. I think it's an inch and a quarter, I think. But uh, just... Took it down in the press between two pieces of flat steel. Smashed that end down flat and then had to put a little slight tweak in it to get the... Since they're out of line, it's got to make a little bit of an S. Put a tweak in there and then put it together. Find out where I needed my hole at. Because I didn't really have anything good to copy. And should, with any luck, go together. How about that? I was worried it was going to have clearance issues here, but they, uh, because on the old, old, old plow, and I brought this down here because I thought I was going to have clearance issues. The old plow had, like what it's got here, it had another one of those there, and you had, it actually had two of them on the back bottom, and one 
ran your steering and one ran your uh, tailwheel lift. Well, that must be why they added these extensions was to get rid of that goofy linkage to run the lift and that raised it up to clear the cylinder mounts. So there's that. Well, I think with all that out of the way, by all rights, the hard part should be done. Really, the next, the only real big thing left is to get the hydraulic system put together, which involves swapping the cylinders and making new hoses. Um, that accumulator actually had damn near full pressure on it because I, my dumbass remembered to actually bleed the pressure off this time. Um, the needle valve. Oh, I closed it. The needle valve's still decent. Gauge is junk, but, uh, yeah, really don't, that, that's really the, the worst of it. Um, need to go through all the struts for the, that support the back of the bottoms. That's the only one that's factory. That one's homemade. That one's homemade. That one's, I don't know what they did. They flame cut the end of it off and they did the same thing on this one. So I've got to replace those, but I think I got enough, should have enough off that other plow. Um, got one cover board to put there. And then I need one for the front, which shoot has those, the square cut ones anyhow. It'd be nice to find a set of five of the Oliver ones that are rounded, but we'll just get one more square cut for now and make them all the same. Repack the coulter bearings and put new seals on them. Replace that coulter, or the blade anyhow. And dad was looking, and this guy, this shank for this coulter has been welded and broke right there. So I'm going to take the coulter off of that, or the shank anyhow, and put on there to replace that broken one. Uh, need to uh, remake, actually what I've, what I've been doing is just saw that off square and then weld the extension rod back on because this is the hose holder supposed to be somebody flame cut that off for some reason that seems like a stupid thing to do um new tires on it the only other thing i probably have to do and i don't know well i don't have to do it but i'm probably gonna do it and i don't know if i'll do it now or after i get it working and use it is that needs a bushing put in it it's a little sloppy which when it was a six bottom it had a really really extreme drag angle on it and it probably spent most of its time being pulled over like that is why it's so floppy but the steering on this thing is surprisingly tight there's not hardly any slop in it so i tell you what this had a 14 or a five and a half by 14 rim on it that the tire for that rim is damn near it's unobtainium it should be on a five and a half inch rim should be a 760 14 then no or either a 760 or a 750 14 nobody makes it anymore closest i could find was a fire just firestone i think it's an 850 14 yeah 850 14 um and at first i was worried it's gonna be a little fat but it looks like it might just barely scuff the furrow wall so i think we're good I would have rather preferred to put a Carlisle on it because they're cheaper. That tire right there was 100 bucks. It was a, it was a fairly expensive tire. I bought three at the same time, which I bought that and the two for the Baylor, so I never did. But that was the that was the most expensive of all three of them because it was the stupidest size. But yeah, I right, had to put the cotter pins away before I forget. All in all, not a bad day. I was kind of worried it wasn't going to make it out tonight once I found or once trying to figure this whole thing out, but we got her, so. Huh, that thing's. Yeah, maybe not. It looks like it's. Yeah, it definitely is. It's... Uh, that might be. 
I don't know. I have to figure out what's going on there. They got they, they all sorts of stupid shit. Oh, I see. That is supposed to be there. Yeah. I have to take that off and fix that. That spacer is supposed to be there to take up the slack, so that's tight. And then there's supposed to be bushings on either side of it, so I have to take care of that. But I guess we're at a stopping point today because I want to have time to get everything put away and get this video up yet tonight. So thus ends part one. We'll catch y'all on the next one.